Hello everybody and welcome to the last uh, set of videos, or the last video I mean, uh, for my 69 favorite horror films. Just to jump into it here, we got Stir of Echoes with Kevin Bacon. This is a film I really love, and I don't think gets enough recognition. I just don't, I, I don't meet enough people, or I don't, I don't meet a lot of people who have seen this movie or even know about this movie. This is a really good film, and it's got like a really creepy like vibe to it. With Kevin Bacon, who like uh, gets hypnotized, and then after the hip, after he's been hypnotized, he like keeps seeing this girl's ghost everywhere. And of course, she he's got to figure out, you know, what the fuck she's trying to tell him and where she came from. Uh, kind of typical idea, but I think it plays it really well and definitely makes really cool use of the song "Paint It Black" by the Rolling Stones. That song is in here. It's a uh, the song in the movie though is a. Uh, a cover version by a different band. I'm not sure what the name of it is, but this movie makes really good use of that song. And this movie just has like a really quite creepy, uh, spooky vibe to it that I really enjoy. I'm not sure what's better, this film or The Sixth Sense, but uh, I got to confess I do like watching this film more than The Sixth Sense. But I think The Sixth Sense might be a better film. But it's been so long since I've seen it, I don't really remember. But I think I remember it being a better film. But this film right here, uh, I do enjoy watching more. And just like uh, you get some really creepy scenes in the film, like when the like when the Kevin Bacon is like talking to his son, and his all at once his son's voice like starts sounding like really deep and slightly uh, demonic, and it's like don't talk to he's like he's saying something like don't uh, don't talk to the boy or something like that talk to me or something like that like a really deep style voice like that and that was creepy as fuck. Uh, <laughs> At the end of the film, of course, Kevin Bacon discovers that she was a girl. The ghost was a girl that was murdered, and uh, his and his neighbors were like responsible for it. Um, this is a really good film. It's really entertaining. Uh, I really enjoy this film. I think more people should give this film a look. Uh, it does slightly resemble The Sixth Sense, but uh, just a little, just with like the whole ghost idea and like seeing ghosts or whatever, and kind of like trying to figure out, you know. Uh, how to uh, get rid of the spirit or satisfy it or give it whatever it needs so it can be at peace. But at the at the same time, it, it's not really like The Sixth Sense at all. I mean, it's a different plot that just happens to involve ghosts in a kind of a similar way or ghosts that want kind of similar things or you have to do similar things to them to get rid of them. Uh, but other than that, the film is like really completely different than The Sixth Sense. Uh, but yeah, this is a really cool film. I definitely recommend people check it out. Kevin Bacon's performance in the film is really good at like just playing like a, a regular blue collar average guy. And it's fu one funny thing in the film is he just like ever since that he uh, has been hypnotized, he just like has constantly like fucking been. He just constantly drinks orange juice for the whole film like nonstop. And he his whole refrigerator eventually is like completely fucking stocked with orange juice. I like orange juice as much as the next guy, but damn. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is a really good film. I definitely recommend people should check it out. Uh, if not just for the uh, the song Painted Black being used well in the film and, and for Kevin Bacon's performance, but just for the spookiness and creepiness of it. Um, and just like the coolness of it for just being a cool film that I just don't think gets enough recognition. But yeah, this film makes my list just because of uh, the blue collar character Kevin Bacon plays. I just uh, entertained by watching him in the film. And just like what he's going through, I feel for him. And just like the whole like uh, how he's trying to figure out, you know, what the fuck's going on with him, like the mystery of it, I think it just played up really fine. And once again, it's just got some really creepy moments like dreams within dream scenes and shit like that. But yeah, once again, this is a film that uh, I don't think gets enough recognition. And if you like uh, movies that involve ghosts, you should definitely check this one out. Now here we are with William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist. Now Evil Dead is my favorite horror movie of all time, the first Evil Dead. But in my opinion, uh, The Exorcist is the best horror movie of all time. Uh, hands down, I think, honestly. I think it's the best horror movie of all time. Just like the idea of the devil as the villain automatically right there. You couldn't, you, 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 I don't think you can get much worse than the devil as the bad guy. But uh, just the idea of him like possessing like a little girl and using her body to commit uh, unholy acts. Uh, right there, automatically just seeing a little girl suffer in the film. Uh, and seeing what she has to go through. Uh, Linda Blair's acting in this film is fantastic. Um, which makes me wonder why she didn't go on to do like even more high profile films. Because her acting was really good in this film. But I don't know. Sometimes shit just happens. But whatever. Uh, as far as like uh, everybody else's acting in this goes. Jason Miller as the 
as a uh, father Damien. He is great. All the actors are great in this film. Um, I like all the characters too. Uh, this film has some, uh, uh, the only like weak, uh, little nitpicks I have of this film. No film is perfect. So even though I consider this film the best horror film ever made, there are some little weak things to it. I know I don't want to go into the plot really a lot in this film because in my opinion, everybody almost in the human race has seen this film. But uh, I just want to go into the little uh, nitpicks I have with it is that some of the like possessed Reagan's lines are like so like uh <laughs> are like so just like insulting. I mean she's I mean it's like the I mean some of her lines what I'm trying to say is are just like she curses so many times. It's just like it makes me laugh. Like some of the lines make me laugh. Like <laughs> Just like, uh, uh, just like, uh, just all the time she says fuck and everything just starts to make me laugh after so long. But at the same time, uh, the movie gets me back into it whenever it does, like, some really cool, radical, you know, uh, fucking chaotic scene. Like, uh, just, uh, like when she's possessed and she, like, grabs the, the hypnotist guy trying to hypnotize her, like, right by the nuts. And like and the scene where her fucking head like spins around, of course, the iconic scene of the movie is just amazing. Uh, other stuff in the film, uh, the spider walk scene, which wasn't actually in the original version of the film, I don't think, uh, is fucking awesome. Seeing the spider walk is cool. Uh, down the stairs, I love that. Um, just like uh, just this, also just the scene where the she's like talking in Jason Miller's like dead the, his dead mom's voice like trying to fuck with him is just like really fucking uh, creepy and sad at the same time this film for me is not just the greatest horror film ever made but it's also one of the best films ever made in my opinion and i definitely think movie buffs and horror film buffs uh have to see this movie at least once uh it's just like an honorary tradition thing uh, for horror movie fans that you have to see The Exorcist at least one time. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this film is just terrific. I recommend this film to anyone except for people uh, uh, who are really young who obviously shouldn't be watching this movie. But for everybody else, this film is just fucking awesome. But yeah, for people uh, who are really young who shouldn't be watching this movie, I would say stay away because this movie is pretty fucking intense. Uh, unless you're like me and you uh, just watched anything anyway and just said fuck it, but uh, but yeah, this is definitely and also in my opinion one of the scariest movies ever made. It's debatable whether you can't really. I mean, you can't really say it's the scariest movie ever made because different films are scarier for different reasons uh, to different people. But in my opinion, this film still ranks up there as one of the scariest horror films ever made, and it's definitely not to be missed. Now, Tremors 2 Aftershocks along with Psycho 2 are two of the uh, horror movie sequels that I have the most fun with. I really like this movie. The only thing that slightly hurts the film is that Kevin Bacon isn't back, but the guy that we do get, the character Grady, uh, he is a lot of fun and he is he is fun to watch and he is cool. And the actor that plays him does a really good job and he's just really entertaining. But if it, it would have cranked the film up even higher if we would have got Kevin Bacon back, but... Either way, we got what we got, and the film still is really good on its own. Um, this is a really entertaining film. I really like this film. Uh, what's really cool about it is that they go like, uh, they bring back the worms, but they do a creative idea where they have the worms actually transform into kind of like a second stage. They turn into obvious, well, shriekers as they call them in the film, and now they can like walk on, uh, on the actual ground and not have to be underground. They're not as dangerous as the worms, but, I mean, not as, like, strong as the worms, but they, they're kind of even more dangerous in their own way because they multiply constantly every time they eat. So there can be, like, a million of them just, like, within a fucking week if they eat a lot. But, um, uh, but, yeah, this, just having, oh, and having Michael Gross back is Bert. You don't have Reba McIntyre this time, uh, with him, but I honestly couldn't really give a fuck because Reba McIntyre was one of the weaker parts of the first movie. Uh, she was okay in the first movie, but not having her back is not a big loss. This film lacks uh, some of the more clever writing of the first movie and the more clever jokes, and it, uh, but it feels really fresh. This film doesn't suffer from feeling like a sequel because it comes up with a fresh idea for its own story with the worms evolving and the shriekers. So it doesn't really feel like a, like a forced sequel or just like a standard sequel. It feels like kind of more more feels more fresh to me with the shrieker idea, 
and just the, having the three main characters together, uh, or just, well, just the three main characters in the film, uh, fucking, uh, Earl and, uh, Bert and the new guy, Grady, just their chemistry, all three together just works really well. And their lines just like back and forth between each other. I just, I just love, like, uh, the, the Shriekers keep eating anything that's hot and they knock out the radio tower because it gives off heat. And Grady keeps thinking they're really smart. Uh, because they're knocking like all the knocking the radio tower out or whatever, and uh, when he finds out what actually well, that they just I mean when he finds out they actually just fucking attack anything that's warm, he's like, uh, you mean they're so smart because they're so stupid? And just that line right there is just hilarious. Uh, this is a really entertaining film. I definitely recommend that fans of the first Tremors check out Tremors two, Tremors three and four. I think are both just okay films, not anything amazing. I uh, I mean they're not anything amazing. They come nowhere close to the coolness of the first two films, especially the first one. This film isn't as good as the first film uh, because the cast is smaller, and I would have liked a, a, a more larger cast similar to the first one. But the smaller, but the cast members we get in this one, they may be smaller, but they're just as likable to me as the people from the, as the, people from the first film. Uh, because we will, we get Bert and Earl and, well, the new character, Grady, and they're just pretty much uh, as likable as the characters from the first film. Except for the absence of Kevin Bacon. Grady's not as likable as Kevin Bacon, but it, he's still good enough. And he's definitely enjoyable to watch, and he is funny as shit. Um, just to round up Tremors 2 here, this is a really fun film. I definitely recommend that people see it. Um, it's just a blast to watch, just to see the new the new monster, the Shriekers, and just to see uh, fucking Bert, Michael Gross, and uh, the character Earl, and even Grady, just to see these three in this situation. It's just a blast to watch, and I highly recommend that people who really enjoyed the first Tremors check this film out. Here we are with Trick or Treat, which, as I've said many times before, is a film I just love to watch on Halloween. It is one of my favorite anthology films. I just have a blast with this film, just from the beautiful-looking Halloween setting to the way this, uh, the stories in the, uh, in the film are, uh, the way they interconnect with each other, Pulp Fiction style, I really think is neat. Um, I just love, like, the Halloween-style stories of, like, the principal, the, he's a serial killer, uh, burying kids in the backyard that he's murdered, and, uh, like, fucking putting, you know, uh, like, the character of Sam in the film, who's, like, I guess supposed to be, like, I guess he's supposed to be, a, like, Sam Hain, the spirit of Halloween, who kills the people who don't obey the rules of Halloween, like, having a candy bar with a razor blade in it, I like that, um, uh, I like most, almost all the stories. I pretty well, I pretty much like all the stories in this film. I think even though a lot, of, even though the stories are predictable, anybody who's seen a couple of horror films or especially is a horror fan will be able to predict the outcome of every one of these stories pretty easily. But they're they're still done with flair and they're done well. And the character of Sam is really fun to watch and his duke him out with the old man in the final story. Just fun to see, and I really like the ending of the film. With the zombie kids like showing up at the old man's house and uh, the them reciting the title of the film, going "Trick or Treat," as the film ends in like a whisper sounding voice. Um, and I love the comic book cuts in this film. Like at the beginning when it's showing like a, a comic book with like little uh, drawed pictures of like uh, like comic book style drawed pictures of uh, what's happened at the beginning of the film with the chick's head or Leslie Bibb's head. I mean, like on a fucking stick. With a sucker in her mouth or a lollipop, uh, that is just awesome for me. I just get a kick out of this film. I uh, also like the werewolf story as well. Uh, with them transform into the song "Sweet Dreams," which is an overused song in horror films, but it's a great cover by Marilyn Manson. So fuck it. If it sounds good, just keep doing it. But either way, um, this film is still really enjoyable. And what makes this film so good, despite the fact that the stories are predictable, is just like the really Halloween style atmosphere. This film really does feel like it takes place on Halloween and just like that really like Halloween style theme stories Like I've said of like the principal burying somebody in his backyard like the you always think you know of like your uh, You always hear stories. I mean about neighbors like over the other side of the fence like burying people in their backyard or something like that at night And I just love stuff like that and I think it flows really well in this film uh, and this film just has like a another it has another story in it. That's really good about like all these handicapped kids in Halloween costumes that the bus driver gets paid to like run them off a fucking mountain and or uh, he gets paid to like kill them all I guess but he ends up like running them off a mountain into the like a, a big river I think or 
But he just runs them off the mountain, and they all end up getting killed like that. And that right there just shows the movie has balls. I mean, killing like a whole group of handicapped children, I mean, that's like, you know, damn. But anyway, <laughs> as far as the film goes as a whole, it's a, it's a really good film. The film isn't really scary. I don't think this is a scary film at all. But what it makes up for, I mean, what it lacks in scariness, it makes up for just fun. This is a really fun film is what it is. And a really great Halloween-themed film. And this is definitely a film you'd want to carve a jack-o'-lantern uh, before you watch and then hop right into it. Uh, after, you've, uh, after you've got done uh, getting some candy for Halloween or whatever. And just sit back and watch this motherfucker on the tube and have a blast. Here you are with American Werewolf in London. Now, by this point in my video, in my 69 favorites, uh, I'm so fucking killed out. But I'm going to try to muster as much energy as I can. For these last few remaining uh, movies here. But uh, American Werewolf in London is hands down my favorite werewolf film. I love this film. Uh, it's a, it is a comedy. But the comedy comes like comes flows. Uh, the comedy in the film I think in my opinion flows from the fact. Of like just the situation being so outrageous and horrible really. More so than it does like just like an outrageous like horror comedy. Uh, but anyway. Um. This film is just also so creative and just has like really quirky like scenes put in it that are just really fun. That And a scene in it I never expected to fucking see in this movie. It just comes out of nowhere. But I love it at the same time where it's like these Nazi uh, fucking like Nazi looking creatures in a combat uniform where the main character like has a nightmare and these fucking like creatures are like murdering his whole family. It's just like the coolest scene ever because it comes out of fucking nowhere. But I, I love it at the same time. And Genia Gutter is in this film, and she is, like, so hot, it hurts. But she's in this film. Um, and uh, also the werewolf transformation in this film is the best ever on film, period, in my opinion. Uh, there are no others uh, <laughs> that come close to this werewolf transformation, in my opinion. Just the makeup effects are just phenomenal. And the effects of the transformation uh, are phenomenal as well. The, the transformation scene alone is enough, in my opinion, for people to check this film out, just to see how good it is. But other than that, just the really creative ideas in this film, just the really cool idea of the fact that every time he kills somebody, like, their fucking ghost, like, hangs around him and, and uh, keeps trying to encourage him to kill himself. And, like, really, uh, they keep, it's, like, really funny because they're, like, trying to tell him to kill himself and they're, like, coming up with random ideas about how he should do it, like, hanging or shooting himself or something. Um, it's it's just it's just funny the dialogue is and the way the the ghosts say it and the way they're trying to encourage him to kill himself and commit suicide, and his friend who is dead keeps like uh his buddy who died keeps like showing up through the movie as like a ghost but every time he uh, he sees him he's like more and more rotted. And this is just such a creative idea that I I see a lot of werewolf films and most of them are shit. Werewolves have suffered from having a lot of bad movies made about them. For some reason, people just go with the basics for werewolves and don't really try to be too creative with the, the idea of a werewolf. And this is a film where I think it gets really creative, like with the, the dead friends and, like, the dead friend and fucking the ghosts and everything, like, talking to the main character. That right there is just really creative, and that's the type of creative idea that I just don't see in werewolf films of today or or even for a long time, even before today. I just haven't seen. They're... There just like seems to be a real lack of a lack of creativity in werewolf films in general. Why I don't know, uh, but uh, we've got what we've gotten, and this film right here, in my opinion, is the best werewolf film ever made, or at least the best one that I've seen thus far. And this is my favorite werewolf film of all time. I love this film. Uh, I can't get enough of this film. Um, and I think that anybody who is a werewolf movie fan has probably seen this movie already. But if you haven't, then I highly recommend that you check this movie out as quick as you can. So here we are with A Stranger Calls. I really like this film, When A Stranger Calls. Um, I love, on the, on the, the fucking posters for the film and on the boxes, uh, it usually says like every babysitter's worst nightmare um, or something like that. But uh, really like the whole babysitter thing or whatever only plays into like the beginning of the movie and that's about it. The remake kind of takes like the whole babysitter idea and runs with it through the whole movie. Which uh, I hated. I hate the remake to this film. It sucks the cock pretty hard, in my opinion. But I really love this original film. I had never actually seen this film until just about a few months ago. But I fell in love with it instantly. I get a kick out of this film. Um, because it's one of the only films where I feel like it actually kind of lets you get into the killer's mind. Because the first part of the movie is him kind of like stalking Carol Kane. Uh, and then after that, it's like him uh, 
well, it's like us as the audience being able to see like him like reintegrated back into society and thinking, you know, maybe will he snap or won't he? Uh, it's just really cool to see a movie from like the killer's point of view like that. Uh, and this is one of the only films I've seen like that. I know there's other films that do that and pro and maybe do it better, but this is one of the only films I've seen that do it or that does it. And I really enjoyed that. Um, the only little problem I have uh, with the ending of the film is that I would have rather the ending of the film had just been about Carol Kane and just the killer, just those two, and not have the cop show up at the end of it and save the day. I would have rather it just been those two uh, and maybe her killing him because it kind of started with them and I would have rather, uh, rather the film just have ended with them. But that's just a minor little nitpick. But other than that, this is a really creepy film. Um, well, I wouldn't really say it's really creepy. Only the first act of The Babysitter and everything. I would say uh, is really creepy. The rest of the film is more uh, is creepy because you. I mean, it's like a question of well, more well, more suspenseful. I would say because it's a question of you know when the fuck is this guy gonna snap? Because we all expect him to to snap. You know, back into being crazy uh, or even more crazy than what he already is. But the beginning of it with the uh, like the phone call and like Carol Kane on the phone and the killer fucking with her. For me, that's the scariest and creepiest part of the film. And him like you know the famous line. Have you checked the children? Just saw that. That shit right there is what totally, uh, that right there is the creepy fucking part of this movie to me. And that right there is what makes this, uh, makes this movie, uh, horror gold in my opinion. Just with the creepiness of the killer himself. And still being able to, like, uh, sympathize with the killer slightly. I do think that the killer is slightly sympathetic in the film. Because, uh, seeing the way that, uh, you know, he's like, uh, Seems like he wants to be normal, but at the same time, it seems like he is losing it. So you kind of do feel a little sorry for him, I think. But either way, this is still like a really terrific film. And I recommend that people who have seen the remake before this one, don't let that like taint your idea of this movie. Uh, definitely give the original a shot anyway, because it is a much better film. And I highly recommend this film. Here we are with Willard. I only have two films left, but just to focus on this one right here. Uh, I really like this film. I really enjoy it. Uh, I remember seeing the original Willard when I was a kid, uh, but I don't remember enough about it to determine whether it was better or worse than the remake, but I'm only going by the remake because this is the film I have seen the most, um, or the version of this story I've seen the most. And I just really like the movie Willard because I really like the idea. I think the idea is extremely unique uh, because uh, it's basically the story of this lonely guy who gets pushed around a lot. Um, it's kind of like uh, he's having like a really mundane life and his life isn't really going nowhere because he has to take care of his sick mother and he can't afford to send her or he can't afford to put her in a home or uh, some place where she can be taken care of. But uh, and, and he eventually finally gets uh, his really his only friend pretty much this little mouse called Socrates and he starts like training these rats and shit. And now the movie could have just went off in a direction where he just got revenge on everybody that fucked with him. And just like had the rats kill everybody, but it doesn't. It's more of like a character study of like now that he has a whole group of friends like all these rats. And he's in power, kind of like the characters in the film who have power over him from the way they're mistreating him. It's kind of like he's in power now. And uh, he's like having a power struggle with this other rat named Ben. Now this might sound really silly to people or just people who haven't seen this film. But it's done in like a really like a cool way in the film. I mean, like, the power struggle between him and, like, this big fucking huge rat. Um, and this is really entertaining and really entertaining and Crispin Glover's in this, in this film. And I'm a big Crispin Glover fan, so automatically bonus points for the movie right there. And his performance uh, in the film is really good. And when his, you know, be his best friend is really only his only friend, Socrates, you know, the mouse dies. The little white mouse gets killed by Arlie Army, who's like, plays the best jackass in any film ever. But, uh, I mean, he always plays the best jackasses in films, uh, period, in my opinion. But, um, when he dies, you can just truly, like, see, like, uh, Crispin Glover's good acting, like, the look in his face of, like, how he just feels like dying at that very moment now that his, uh, his buddy's gone. Uh, one of the little trivia things here is that the picture in Willard's house of his father is actually the actor who played Willard, I believe, in the original film. I do remember bits and pieces of the original film. Uh, but like not enough to determine which film is better. I really uh, do want to go back and watch the original film sometime when I get a chance. But as far as this film goes, I think it's highly entertaining. 
The only thing I don't like about it is it kind of sets up for a sequel at the end. It still ends uh, sad. I remember Willard dying in the original film uh, when all the rats revolted against him but uh, because he betrayed them. But at the end of this film, he lives, so it's kind of like it's trying to set up for a sequel. But uh, it, it never, of course, we're never going to get a sequel because this film didn't do well in theaters because people expected it to be like a killer like rat movie about a guy who has like an army of killer rats. So it's more of like a sympathetic character study of this guy as a human being, of the character Willard as a human being. Um, and that's what I really like about it. It's really a sad horror movie, a, really a sad character study horror movie, which is what I really enjoy. And Crispin Glover's good performance and just the unique idea of it of a man like befriending like a fucking you know army of rats having uh you know being able to get along better with animals than human beings and just like uh just just the uniqueness of the idea uh I, it's just something i haven't seen uh, before or a lot i know there's other films who have probably done like the uh animal motif idea with a character like uh bonding with an animal or something like that but this film i feel does it uh pretty much uh want it this film, I think, is the one of the best at it, is what I'm saying, and just the bond that you can see the, the character Willard having with the mouse Socrates and their growing bond together in the film, I just find highly entertaining. Um, but yeah, this is a really good film. I definitely recommend checking it out. If you're a fan of Crispin Glover, I say give it a shot. Uh, if you're a fan of horror films, uh, give it a shot. But if you expect this just to be like a killer rat movie, uh, then you will be highly disappointed. But if you're open-minded about it, I think, and uh, are okay with it being more than just a killer rat movie and more of a character study of the, the character Willard as a human being, uh, in my eyes, that's what it's more, uh, I think it's more of a film about that um, and like a character study about uh, what happens when people come into power over others kind of as well um, or when the character of Willard comes into power over others, like when he becomes the leader of the rats and like the power struggle and everything. Kind of like a, also a character study of him in a position of power and just his character in general, I guess you could say it. But if you're okay with that, then I think, I mean, if you accept that as the actual story, then I think you'll have a really good time with this film and really enjoy it just like I did. Just to finish up my last part of my 69 favorite horror films video, I just, I just figured I'd do the, uh, uh, the last part of the video in person. I'll just go ahead and say it. Uh, number 69 is Bubba Hotep. I love Bubba Hotep. Bruce Campbell in it is just, his performance as Elvis is just so fucking funny. It's just so hilarious. It's my second uh, favorite film by Don Coscarelli after the, after Phantasm, of course, the first Phantasm. Uh, I love this film. Bubba Hotep is so funny just with the jokes in it. Uh, like the, the other act, the other character in the film who thinks he's, uh, fucking the, the president and that he's been the, he's been, and that is, he tells uh, Bruce Campbell that his skin was like spray painted black, uh, and that's why he's a black guy now. <laughs> just that comedy uh, is just so funny in the film, and just the unique idea of it, and the, the, the quirkiness of the idea, and just like how it's just like such an out there idea, but at the same time it's extremely fun, and it's just something I never thought I would see. Uh, Bruce Campbell as Elvis taking on like a fucking uh, mummy, like a mummy spirit. At a, at a rest home is just something I thought I would never see. It's a fantastic film. I don't want to say any more than that. Bruce Campbell's performance in the film, it makes the film worth seeing. Just that by, just his performance by itself makes the film worth seeing. He's so funny. Like when this like Egyptian, like scary beetle like comes towards him and he's like, uh, he's like, a, all right, man, uh, <laughs> like getting into Kung Fu stance. Like he wants to actually fight it, uh, using hand to hand combat. That's just so funny, just seeing him as Elvis doing stuff like that. It's just fucking hilarious. It's a great movie. I suggest anybody who's a fan of Bruce Campbell, check it out. And anybody who's a fan of Don Coscarelli, uh, definitely check it out if you haven't already. Which, it's been out for a while, so I would say by now that most people have seen it. But for the anybody that hasn't seen it or new coming horror fans, if you like the Evil Dead films and are a fan of Bruce Campbell and are a fan of like uh, his comedy, uh, Kim doing comedy and stuff, you should definitely check out his performance as Elvis. Uh, in uh, Bubba Hotep. It's just great. I've been hearing about a prequel to the film for a long time, uh, but if it doesn't have Bruce Campbell in it, then I don't, it's not even worth making, to be honest. Maybe you can get another a actor that can recapture the magic, maybe, but still at the same time, Bruce Campbell's a big part of the reason why this film succeeds, and to just do another one without him just seems like a really bad misstep. So, I'm kind of 
kind of like 70 or, or, or like 80% sure that they shouldn't do it because he won't be in it. And despite how good the next, whoever they get would be, um, it still wouldn't be the same or as good in my opinion. So I say fuck a, fuck a prequel, fuck a sequel if you can't get the Campbell back in my opinion. But um, that's the end of my video, my 69 favorites. Um, just to wrap up everything, this has been my Christmas special for my subscribers out there who have been watching my videos. Um, I just felt like doing a 69 favorite horror film video. I love watching favorite videos. They're always fun. But of course, they're, uh, they're also, uh, they're at, they have problems. Um, I thought about not doing one at first, but then I decided to anyway, just thinking it would be fun. And this video has really tired me the fuck out. And I'm about to kill over right now. Just, I'm so happy though and excited at the same time that I'm done with this video, but also proud of it at the same time of, of just like all the work and effort I put into it. But just what I was want to say is that doing a favorite video uh, is kind of useless at the same time as what I'm what I'm trying to say because your favorites can change all the time. I mean, as you get older, your tastes can change, and you can swap movies, uh, different films in that are just now coming out later. You know, after your list has already been made. But as for now, as of right now, these these are my 69 favorite horror films. And for people out there wondering why I didn't put films like Predator or Aliens in this uh, in this uh, list, it's called Alien. It's because Aliens is more of an action movie to me, and Predator, even though it has horror elements to me, uh, with the inclusion of Schwarzenegger, still feels more like an action film to me. I still love both those films, and I highly regard those films as two really terrific sci-fi films. But I just think they have more to do, more in the gel with the sci-fi action genre than, I mean, I would classify them as sci-fi action horror. Um, uh, Predator has more horror in it than Aliens does, in my opinion. But uh, still, I think both films just have, just cater too much to the action genre to be really considered uh, in the horror genre. Same thing with Army of Darkness. I think Army of Darkness caters too much to like comedy and uh, adventure style to really be considered a horror film, and it's just too, the gags in it are just too goofy, they had comedy in Evil Dead, and some of the comedy in Evil Dead, I thought, a few, like a few times where it was a little bit too goofy, but in the Army of Darkness, it's just off the wall, uh, <laughs> there's just no hold back in that film, despite the fact I love that film, and love all three Evil Dead films, I just don't classify Army of Darkness as a horror film, but just to round out this video, just to be done with my 69 faves, um, to anybody that's watched this entire thing, um, more power to you for sitting through all this shit. Um, I hope you had a good time. Um, and Merry Christmas, everybody. And I hope you all have a really happy Christmas. And I'll see you guys with my next holiday special or my next set of videos. Um, I'm going to take a short break for a little while. And uh, when I come back, I'll be gearing up to do the Hellraiser reviews. And after I'm done with them... I'll probably do the, uh, a remake versus original video and start doing some of those styles of videos, like remakes versus originals, just comparing them and uh, pointing out which ones are better, which obviously the originals are going to win most of the time, or 90% of the time, but still I thought it'd be fun to do. So I'll see you guys after my break with the Hellraiser franchise reviews, and I hope you guys have a wonderful Merry Christmas. Oh, you were expecting Michael Myers, weren't you? Uh, sorry to disappoint you, fuckers. Bye now.